Do I do the intro this time? Suppose I can. Greetings, one and all, to another episode of Heroes Time. I am your host, Lou, and I am joined by my co-host, Drew. Yes! What? I said she is. Congratulations, yes. Hero, the Say hello, opens. Drew. Hello, Drew. What are our topics for today? Um, it's a very, very good question. So, our topics for today are when I find Notepad++. Overwatch heroes may be coming sooner than originally expected. Ooh. Create a repeat button at the end of every match. Ah. And our uh, hero review, Abatha. Magical. That was a little too overzealous for me. I think you need to tone it back a bit. Okay. Anyway. So, um, this, this Overwatch Heroes may be coming sooner than originally expected. Um, this topic really piqued my interest. Um, mostly because of the article that is actually uh, linked in uh, the Reddit post. So yeah, this, this obviously comes from Reddit. Um, now, I am not a fan of this in the slightest. The, the title of the article is Destiny, Destiny rather, Call of Duty and other Activision franchises could be added to Heroes of the Storm. Right? And the article um, is, you know, heavily hinting that this could happen. So things like uh, Destiny, Call of Duty, any of the Tony Hawk's games, any of that stuff could end up in um, what's it called? Uh, Heroes of the Storm. And the reason they come up with this is because of an interview, interview that was originally in uh, Dutch that was translated with Google Translate. H how do you feel about taking this uh, information from Google Translate, Lou? I... Google Translate can be handy to get the gist of something, but when it comes to you know, for personal, but when it comes to using Google Translate to disseminate information um, to a wider audience, uh, I so much, so much gets lost in translation. Um, there, there's translation is so, there's so many nuances to translating, and translating in in, in and of itself is an interpretation. So you're never going to get like a verbatim word for word translation that means exactly what it meant from one language to another. I mean, there's a whole academic field of translation studies that work on translating a work in one language to another. Um, I can give the example of a short story written by Franz Kafka. Um, called Metamorphosis, in which the main character wakes up one morning and he has been transformed into um, into a creature. Now, in English, they kind of use a language that... They use words and terminology that lead you to believe that he's been turned into some sort of giant insect, when actually, in the original German, Kafka did not intend for a specific sort of image to be portrayed or conveyed to the reader. Um, Kafka wanted the descriptors to be more ambiguous so that the reader couldn't quite tell what sort of transformation happened to the character. Um, and I give this, this example just to illustrate how much can be lost in translation 
Um, the context is lost. Um, there are words that just don't translate from one language to another. And I'm quite sure that there are certain things in Dutch that just don't translate to English. You know, ex there is no exact translation, only yeah. an interpretation of terminology. So one... I, I don't... Also, Google Translate is not that accurate. No, it's, it's not. It's far from it. Um, so... I don't want to be overly critical, but I kind of feel I need to because Google Translation is, or Google Translate is not an acceptable method of translation. I mean, if I wanted to, okay, so something relatively big happened in Warframe not so long ago involving China. The Chinese company, Chang Yu, actually put up a statement, but I can um, read it in the slightest because it was in Chinese or uh, it was in a language I couldn't read. Um, and I wanted to find someone that could translate it, and I couldn't. I wasn't prepared to actually uh, go on 10 o'clock and actually say, well, according to Google Translate, blah, 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 blah. No, I wasn't prepared to do that. It wasn't factual, it wasn't accurate enough. Um, and I actually find it quite upsetting and um, unnerving the fact that this writer, this article writer, I'm not going to name any names, um, even though it's in front of me, has turned around and said, oh, Google Translate says this about what was said. That's not good. And as a result, the article is heavily hinting that other um, franchises that belong to Activision may go into Heroes of the Storm. Blizzard then later responded and actually said that they don't have any um, uh, intention of bringing or they don't have any plans to add Activision content to Heroes of the Storm. But one thing that I find um, really, really stupid is um, this, this one statement that I, I just want to make sure I've got the right one. Um, right, so this, this one paragraph that I'm going to read out. As of now, Blizzard hasn't ventured outside of its immediately, uh, immediate wheelhouse for new heroes. You only assume they mean warehouse. Um, but, uh, but they'll need to at one point in the game's life cycle. Relying on Activision uh, published franchises could breathe fresh lot air into the popular MOBA and consider a long list of uh, games Activision has released, we could um, very well see a lot of new characters several years okay so when i read that the first thing i did was i went to wow wiki i looked up the major characters article and i started to count i then got about a third of the way through counted 150 characters um that weren't uh like gods or any character that i wouldn't expect to see in uh heroes of the storm and decided to promptly give up counting and went, that's 150 characters right there. At what point in time would Blizzard ever need to give up and use Activision's content? I, yeah. Um, I don't think they would ever need to look outside yeah, their, they, their own stuff, stuff to... To add to it so it's just silly i and <laughs> okay this is me this is me being pedantic breathe fresh air into the popular moba hold on hold on why would you need to breathe fresh air into something that's popular you know you would need to breathe life into something if it was dying so right okay so that, that that's that's all i have to say about this article. 
I'm happy to continue now on to other stuff. If uh, sorry, other parts of this topic. Um, if you are. Yeah. Okay. So, first things first. I think you've already made it clear, but how do you feel about the idea of Activision content uh, or franchises appearing in Heroes of the Storm? It would just be weird. Yeah. I, it would I, feel I... out of place. You know, I know, I know that the respective universes of, um, you know, WoW and War, WoW, including Warcraft. Um, Starcraft Starcraft. and Diablo and Overwatch Overwatch are going to be very different things, but just psychologically they fit, they kind of fit together. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Maybe it's that whole Blizzard aesthetic, I don't know. Um, but it makes sense. Whereas if you have a game that is outside it, like um, what what were some of the examples that they gave? Destiny well, or let, let's go with Call of Duty, yeah. Or Call of Duty. I just, just I feel like it's a different it's a different type of sorry different it's beast. a different type of yeah. I completely agree with you. Um, sorry, have you finished? Yeah. Okay, uh, I completely agree with you. Um, I feel that. Um, as you put it, um, Overwatch, Diablo, Warcraft, Starcraft, they all have this blizzard aesthetic. They all, you know, it, it's like everything they do in those games has a signature inside them that says blizzard. Yeah, it's like it belongs, it really feels this is a blizzard game, right? Um, and they're, they're kind of wacky and bouncing off each other kind of stuff. Um, but when you've got like a character, a generic soldier character that's super serious um, from Call of Duty, that doesn't fit the aesthetic of any other Blizzard game. Any Blizzard game. It's, it's, I mean, I actually feel TF2, Team Fortress 2, that aesthetic actually meshes better with Blizzard's um, aesthetic than Call of Duty. Or even uh, Destiny. I mean, to me, it sounds like, hey, let's put Warframes in Heroes of the Storm. No, that's that's, that's a stupid idea. It doesn't work like that. I mean, heck, that would still work better than um, Call of Duty. But no, that's still a stupid idea. Um, so, yeah, we, we don't... No, no. Activision stuff should stay clear from Heroes of the Storm. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, how do you feel about the idea of seeing Overwatch characters in the not too distant future? I think it would be odd to see them incorporated into Heroes of the Storm before the game itself is actually released. Yeah. However, I could understand the strategy of doing that to give you kind of a taster of what, you know, introducing a couple of the key characters that they kind of announced at BlizzCon last year. Um, I'm trying to remember, is it... The British one is... Is it Chaser? Tracer. 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 Yeah. Tr- Tracer in there, just to be like, like, just one of them, or one or two of them, just being like, look, here it is, here she is in all her glory, um, in, you know, introducing this character. Because we've already seen the gameplay um, kind of teased to us a bit, or like explained to us a bit via BlizzCon last year. Um, so it, it, I could see why they might want to do it, but I think it would just be too soon. Like if they all of a sudden, you know, tomorrow or whatever, announce, right, okay, Overwatch Hero is going to be add to Hot, so just be like, but we don't, there's no sort of legit sentiment for people to get excited about it because people haven't like grown to love the game because it's a, it hasn't been released yet so you know. 
Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And I the, think Blizzard would very much uh, not release it until... Um, oh, they, they wouldn't start putting heroes into... Um, Hots until uh, it's come out or it's in beta. I mean, my question to you is, if it's in closed beta, yeah, closed beta, so you have to like be invited to play it, yeah. Would you want to start seeing heroes in hots, or would you want to wait till it's like open beta or even released? I, I would want to wait for it to have been released, right like, to the general public. Okay. That, that's just my that's just my view because, again, going back to what I was saying about, you know, the, pe people have not been given the chance to kind of love this game as it were to love overwatch and to like have good feelings about it um that that's what you get when a character from your favorite franchise is being released whether it's you know a playable character or um an npc you get that kind of nice sense of nostalgia that comes from it, you get excited about it because you recognize this character. It's it's a combination of the familiar and the new because you're seeing it in a new format. Which is probably yeah. why Heroes of the Storm works so well is you have, you know, that that stuff feeling going on. I mean, Blizzard even has characters from you know, the was it um the Lost Vikings. Like, that's one of their really old games, I think. How, like, was it one... I don't want to say it's their first game, but it was one of their their early games. Yeah, no, uh, Lost Vikings was one of their very early games. If I remember correctly, I'm going to have a quick look. It was on the Sega Genesis. Uh, by... Um, yeah, it was on the Sega Genesis. Uh, oh, it might have been on the SNES as well. Let's have a look. Uh, platforms. Oh, wow, this went on loads of things. Uh, Amiga, Amiga CD32, Game Boy Advance, MS-DOS, Sega Genesis, SNES, and PlayStation. So, and it was released in 1992 as well as 2003, so obviously it got, like, ported to the PlayStation. Yeah. But, you know, even, you know, for that... that Releasing the lot Spike Inks, that's, that's, I, I don't want to say a nod, but that is an acknowledgement to fans of Blizzard who have been around since the early days. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's what they're playing with here, is that nostalgia. Obviously, not everyone's going to react in the same way when a character is announced, but you know, you're going to get some portion of your your customer base, your fan base, um, responding positively to it. Yeah. Um, and, like, for other people, it will get them to go back and say, like, oh, I really enjoy playing this character. I might try playing the game that it, that this character originally appears in, you know? Getting people yeah. to, to interact with the older games. Well, I remember when I was a lot younger, I actually used to play um, Blackthorn, uh, which is another one of Blizzard's, I, th I feel, original IPs. Um, I don't think it's based on anything else, but it was, it was very much like a, a side scroll. Did you ever play uh, Flashback? When you were young, when you were a kid, really no. old MS DOS. Game. Okay, have you ever played Abe's Odyssey? I have not played any of those games because I didn't have access as a child. Um, but did you uh, do you know of them? Uh, do you know of Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus? Nope. Ah, oh, okay. Well, okay. So basically, it's a side-scrolling platform game, not in the same uh, style of Sonic, like. You know, it's quite slow. You have to jump over holes and things like that. It's quite slow. Um, but you had guns. That's, that's basically Blackboard. 
Um, and I'd like to actually see uh, the main character from Black Claw make an appearance in um, the uh, in Heroes of the Storm. Um, but you know, apart from the main three, which is like Diablo, Starcraft, and Warcraft, uh, Blizzard don't really have a lot of uh, franchises to to draw various different things from. So I wouldn't be surprised if Lots Vikings just remains on its own. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's basically that. Um, the only thing I would really like to see in terms of uh, new stuff coming into Heroes of the Storm is actually um, a character from StarCraft 1 known as Praetor Phoenix. Um, but yeah, that's thing altogether. So, should we talk about the replies? Yep. Okay. So, shockingly, well, not maybe not so shockingly, um, the replies actually really focus on uh, not Overwatch heroes coming sooner than originally expected, but like the, the post title suggests, it's actually focusing on the idea of Activision content being brought into Heroes of the Storm. Um, and someone who actually read the original Dutch being able to give a better translation basically says that so much of the uh, Google Translate is like, you know, misconstrued or taken out of context or whatever. Um, and um, the idea yeah. Um, the name Activision is only ever used by the writer of the article, not the Blizzard employee, so they're like the, the interviewee. Uh, I assume that the former misinterpretation of the Blizzard games mentioned as being Activision games. Uh, the interviewee mentions that only StarCraft 2 and Overwatch. So, you know, in the article they're like, oh, you know, really heavy. Uh, insinuating Overwatch stuff, but um, basically they're inferring that um, Artanis is being worked on. Artanis is the new Zealot uh, warrior hero for StarCraft, um, or the StarCraft faction, and it's being heavily hinted on that the StarCraft 2 team and the HOTS team are working heavily together to make sure that the Artanis character in HOTS is to be who he should be. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so the same expect, uh, expectation uh, could be made for Overwatch heroes uh, if the teams were to approach each other. So like the Hearts team, the Overwatch team. Um, and uh, the last point that was actually made in the article, the original Dutch article, is that if you pre-ordered uh, the next StarCraft 2 expansion, you actually get Artanis for Heroes of the Storm. Uh, the rest of the replies mostly focus on the fact that it feels like the article is very much being clickbait. So trying to get uh, a fan-based reaction. Basically, oh, this sounds like terrible, oh, this sounds amazing, and just basically getting people to click on the article even though the article is trash. Is tabloid trash. Yeah. So yeah, I I think there's not really. I, I don't feel there's much to go on in terms of the replies. Do you? Not really. I think there's... they all the replies kind of just sum up how we feel about it. Is that it's a bad it's it's bad form translate using Google Translate to translate an original article and then. It's additionally bad to, um, or bad, you know, bad practice, or not additionally bad practice, but the practice that they're using in terms of the title that they've put on this article, um, are, it, it, it is, it's just... Clickbaiting. Clickbaiting. Right, should we move on to the next topic? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to pioneer this one? Sure. Um, so this is another one from Reddit, and um, it's 
titled uh, Create a Team Repeat button at the end of every match. The original post states, um, for the rare occasions when you get matched with decent players and want to do it again. Uh, I know there is already an option to your party after a match is over. Many times there are already t there, there are already two parties of two and three players or two parties of two and a solo guy. There should be a button or option to just repeat the whole team. It will already get... Uh, it will already get you to... It will already get you all ready and looking for a new match that would speed up a lot of your match search times and avoid these team letdowns after a nice game. How do you feel about this? I actually think it would be a good idea. Um... Sometimes I get people friend requesting me after a, a match or or doing that, you know, invite player to party thing after a match. Um, it's only happened a couple of times. Um, but I think it I think it would be a good thing um, as an addition because as the original post says, um, really good experience playing with a particular group of people there should be sort of a, a button to suggest a a second you know playing a second game together um, I'm not sure when the most opportune moment would be for it to pop up maybe um, you know at the end animation when the um, when the enemy's tower is crumbling, or when your tower is crumbling, it could pop up and just, it could just be repeat match, question mark, yes or no. Um, so it would, it would be something that you, it would, a you would have to respond to, as opposed to just, you know, an optional thing, because some people might not see it or react to it in time. And then I think that would give you enough opportunity for um, for everybody to respond. I feel it needs to be a bit complicated. Uh, reason being is um, okay. So say say you've got a team of three. You are part of a team of three, so you got your two friends as well, and then you got two other people. If yeah. if someone was to say, uh, if if one of the others was to turn around, one of the randoms was to turn around and say, "Let's play with them," right? I feel that it comes back to you, but it votes between you and your friends. Yeah. So if it's a case of um, I say yes, sorry, you say yes, and your two friends say no, then you don't reform back with um, the people that have actually um, requested it or said yes, but you are still your three. Yeah. Right? Okay. Because my concern is if, um, if the person asks, do you want to... Uh, replay again together you say yes and your teammates say no your teammates get separated from you and that I very much assume is not what you want as no. a player I didn't, I didn't think about that downside yeah because yeah. if, if you're already teamed up with two or three people and it separates you out because you voted differently yeah that that in and of itself is a problem yes so in addition say say um person four says you know you, you got you and your two friends and then person four says i want to actually regroup together uh and your team says yes so there's um persons one two three and four that says yes but five says no i think it should just remove five find another person to fill their slot. 
Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. actually, it doesn't have to be like an entire yes, no answer. It's, you know, it's not like a unanimous thing. It can just be like, oh, if you've said no, then you just drop out. But if you're already in a party, you know, then it needs to consider a vote, you know, yeah. um, a majority vote there. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that would be of benefit to people playing by themselves who have not been put in a party already. Yeah. Um, I mean, there have been numerous occasions when I've just been playing and then someone's like, hey, do you want to join? And it's like, yeah, I'd love to join, you know. Um, you know, I've enjoyed playing with them. But sometimes when I've been playing with someone, I'm like, you're an idiot. You haven't got a clue what you're doing. Uh, no, I want to go. So, yeah. okay. Then. Uh, that, that's my opinion on the original post. Um, some of the good. replies are kind of on, on both ends of the spectrum with this, really. Um, one says that, that they love this idea. The problem is I wouldn't want to end up to be set up against another five-man pre-made. So I guess what they're saying is that they don't think that it's... I mean, it's a good idea, except that it would be on a downs... It would be a... Okay, so... A negative thing? So basically, what they're saying is... So back a prayer. Um, is that if they end up being in a five-man... So if, if there is them, them party does three people, and then there's another party of two people, and they're like, do you want to uh, join forces again? And then they click yes. They shouldn't be put into an... Uh, like, a, against an opponent, which is a five-man pre-made. I don't know how I feel about this because part of me says, well, you are a pre-made because you've already uh, played with these people before. You've yeah. had some inkling of how they play. Yeah, you should go against people of the same ilk. Um, at the same time, um, there is a problem where people um, you know, they, like it's it's convenient for like you myself and a third person because we're all on Teamspeak. We're all talking to each other on the same uh, what's it called voice over IP system. If we've got two random people that yeah they're competent, yeah they're good, and yeah we're happy to play with them again, but they're not easily able to communicate with us. That would inspire me that we shouldn't go against a five-man team. Yeah, but there's no way for, for the game to know that you guys are talking together on TeamSpeak. No, that's true, but I can't imagine that uh, a five-man uh, pre-made, yeah, uh, like a... Um, they wouldn't be communicating uh, effectively through some voice over IP system. Yeah. Yeah, so... In that regard, I feel it's unfair. So I actually feel that if anything, the game should just match you up to similar people. So it's like you know maybe, oh this this is this is a team of five that are, are um what's it called uh, a repeat team, yeah. And this is a team of five that's a repeat team, as opposed to a pre-made team of five. Yeah. Yeah. And that, so I think, that's I think one that of the comment easy. says is that it would it would you know, match you with other repeat teams. But then the question is, well, what if there's no more repeat teams to be matched with? What happens? That's a really good question. I, I would feel it would be a case of you have to sit and wait. Yeah. You have to sit and wait for a, a repeat team to uh, appear. Um, you know, it might be something that works it might be something that doesn't work in the slightest um someone mentions that it would be easy it would make this this thing would would make it easier for um a community to build up as well um and they say that it would be nice not to only have something like this but to have more so i'm not Oh, but have more obvious slash better tools for adding to your friends list based on the people you've played with. 
So perhaps saying like you previously played with these people, do you want to play with them again? Without having to add them to your friends list, maybe. Because I I tend not to add people to my battle.net friends list unless I know them or I've spoken to them on Teamspeak. Yeah. Um, and I've I've played I, like I've met them through somebody I know. Yeah. Um. um I'm there's one thing I would really like for Heroes of the Storm uh, and that's like a guild slash clan unit um, it might seem a bit overreactive or redundant or anything but I feel a clan chat would be really beneficial you know, you, you can get to know new people and things, you know, it's like, oh yeah, um, oh, it's really great meeting you. You should come on TeamSpeak or Skype or whatever. Who <laughs> uses Skype? Um, so, yeah. Cool. Um, do we have any, because this one's, this might, this might be another short week, but do we have any thoughts on this one? Um... No, not particularly. As long as it's done right, I think uh, this would be a cool feature. And I think other features like uh, clans would be another cool feature. But I'm not pushing really for either. Yeah. I mean, I'm... I'm maybe I'm just in a... I'm just easy to please with, with games, but... Um, who am I kidding? <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm fine with how things are. But the, it would be nice to have some kind of intermediary between finding, you know, being a solo player and finding a group of people that I mesh well with. Um, and, you know, playing um, with people that I, I know and I'm speaking to on TeamSpeak, where the organization is good because, and, and I'll, I'll get to this example a little bit more depth when we discuss Avatar next but there are times where you've been matched up I'm, I'm specifically talking about AI not necessarily quick match but you've been paired up with people in AI who all you know you know what you're doing you're just playing a couple warm-up games before you go on the quick match or you're learning a new character and you get the map objectives You've been playing for a while, and you're with four people who don't know what they're doing. And that yeah. can be particularly frustrating. Yeah. Right. Shall we talk about Ether? Ever. Ever. Yeah. Yep. Um, so he was... Uh, he's He was on rotation last week, but I think he's continued on rotation this nope. week. No. no? Okay. Nope. No. Um, he is not. But, um, I liked him so much after playing him on rotation that I bought him. So that tells you, <laughs> How you like about him? my experience with Abathur. Um, so before even going through um, why I like him, I do think I would, yeah, I do recommend him as a character. And I would spend 10k in gold on him. <laughs> um, so, Abathur is a StarCraft 2 character? Or StarCraft character? Uh, StarCraft 2. Yeah, Starcraft he's hard to swarm. Um, he, is cons he is the evolution master of Kerrigan's Swarm. And he is, I guess, kind of a scientist in a way. Because he's a wizard from, you know... A genetic basis. Um, he's not a in StarCraft 2. He's not a direct in combat character, which reflects in his um, abilities. Abilities in Heroes of the Storm. Storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and through the use of his symbiote um, and toxic nests. Um, so. I 
think playing Abathur gives you a whole different perspective on Heroes of the Storm because you're not directly engaged in a one-to-one or I say one-to-one but you're you're not directly playing as a character yeah Um, you're boosting a character you're shielding a character you're doing a little bit of bonus damage um, with the uh, with the stab and spike burst skills and the uh, carapace is the shield Um, so you kind of have more of the almost like a, a battlefield perspective so you're you're looking at the entire map you're looking at everybody else not just your own character but you're looking at what everybody else is doing on your team and um i guess with your enemies as well um so it's it's really like a big picture experience rather than an individual portion of that. Did that make sense? <laughs> I, I know what you're trying to say. Uh, it's a very different perspective on things, very like sort of strategic um, viewpoint. You know, you're you're just basically uh, along for the ride, whereas he, is, you know, the player that's controlling him is the taxi driver, if you will. Yeah. Which when it when it works together, when you're with when, when you sim- put your symbiote on a character that knows what they're doing and knows how to play their character, this can be really great. Like, I had one positive experience playing Abathur where I stayed symbioted to a Vala played by somebody I didn't know. And it, as a combination, that was fantastic. Now, that... that doesn't even kind of cover what the experience is like when you're playing Abathur with people that you can talk to on TeamSpeak. Um, the amount of coordination that you can pull off with Abathur and another character like Vala. I think I think we were playing together, Drew. Was it you that I played with, with Abathur and you were Vala? Possibly. Yeah. Um... That, you know, the the ability to kind of communicate with your team members verbal like verbally using a, a talk, yeah, a voice chat system. Fantastic. It it's really positive. On the flip side, if your team mem- if your team members don't know what they're doing, it can be so frustrating because yeah. you're attached to characters who don't quite know what's or, attached to to a player who doesn't quite know what's going on or where they're going or what they want to do and either they're not paying attention to their health or they're being a bit too timid in their playing style or just not thing is it just doesn't work and it's so frustrating yeah and there's no like headway being made i was in a game last night that was an AI game. It lasted nearly a half an hour. What? Yeah. <sighs> Insane. I know. I was just like, this should not be going on for this long. When I when I play an AI game, I have an expectation of it to average at about 15 minutes. Sometimes at 12, sometimes at 17. But for the most part, I expect... 15 like when it hits when it hits the 17 minute mark is when i start getting agitated i'm like this is going on too this is going on too long but i was stuck in this game and nothing was happening and it was so frustrating because i could not do anything myself to to push you know because i i was playing as abathur so while abathur is a good character. I mean, he's he's a specialist character, but he he's very much a support specialist. 
if that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, um, because you're just kind of stuck on somebody's head for the most, unless unless you pick the um, evolve monstrosity ultimate ability, um, you can just be stuck on somebody's head for forever. It can be it can be so frustrating. Um, in terms of Abather's aesthetics, I mean he ain't pretty to look at. He's um, his face is quite vaginal. Um, but also with his eyeballs, it kind of kind of makes it look him look a bit diseased as well. Um, if you have trypophobia, he might. Or tri trypophobia or trypophobia? I can't remember. It's the fear of irregular shaped patterns or holes. Yeah, looking at Abathur is probably not your idea of fun. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I don't think he's supposed to be cute and cuddly. Although, I've heard a lot of people rave about the Pajamathur skin. They think it is kind of cute. Um... It is fine. Yeah. It's quite adorable, especially because your um, locusts turn into toy trains. Well. Um, but yeah. Not pretty to look at, but fun to play in the right situation. How do you feel about Abathur? Right, my turn. Okay. So... Abathur is a NPC character that's used between missions in StarCraft 2 Heroes of, uh, Heroes of the Storm, Heart and Swarm. Um, basically, what Abathur did was he allowed you to upgrade your different units uh, specific to the campaign. Uh, you never actually fought it in. Um, I actually quite enjoy him. I'd certainly say he's worth the 10k. His abilities are quite fun, um, and yeah, it's, it's quite nice. The like the the, the, little, the toxic nest mines, they're quite nice. The the locust strain is kind of weird, um, and I feel a bit risky to actually go out into the field. And I mean, when you're playing against bots, it's super easy because you just go near the towers, and then the locusts just go for the towers and nothing finds you ever um but if enemy players start saying oh there are locusts where's the abathur let's go kill the abathur uh it's too risky to go out into the field um the symbiote's cool as you said it's very much you're taxing on someone i like to, there's a, a meme picture um i will see if i can quickly find it for you now uh, uh, on here Okay, um, it's a picture of, wow, I cannot find it at all, of a tank from Warhammer 40k with a sort of uh, general dude um, riding it, and he basically says, go over there, I want to hit it with my sword. He, you know, he's, he's wielding a sword like, yeah, and... So, uh, and that's how I feel with Abathur. It's like, go over there, I'm going to hit it with my sword. Um, his abilities are quite cool. I don't like the fact that when you look at him uh, in the hero picket, you can't see his uh, symbiote abilities, like, you know, his, his spike and so on and so forth. Um, I think that's kind of dark. Sorry, his stab ability. Because, mm. um, like, well, th th there are two ways of actually playing Abatha. Um, maybe it's just a case of the UI is not built to accommodate it, but I mean, it's, I don't think it would be that hard to actually accommodate it. Um, one thing I think is a bit dumb about Abatha is the fact that you can't take control of um, the Dragon Knight or the the Garden Terror. You, you know, the, you know, 
you can't take control of them regardless of whether or not you are unsymbioted or anything you can't pick up any coins from um, same the thing black heart bay you can't pick up any skulls you can't you cannot interact with any of the mission uh, stuff and I feel that's bad in a really bad way. You know, even if you're... Sorry, I just got a text message. Um, even if you're in your monstrosity, um, you can't interact with any of this stuff. And as the monstrosity, I wouldn't expect you to, but you can't even do it as just plain Abatha. Um, which I feel so dis... You know, disjointed from this. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't realize that that was the case because I've only ever throw been, it someone. yeah, I've been on a when I've used when I've symbioted onto the evolved monstrosity to control it. Um, that's kind of the only well, time I've at, ever. At one point in time, we were, uh, which me and other people were playing uh, Dragon Knight, and um. That we had it ready and I was just going to hop on and take it um, because I was just in the bush next to it but then when I tried to I couldn't and I was like what? so that, that was quite shocking to me yeah, I, I feel like I feel like Abathur should be able to take control of Dragonite or take control of um, the Garden Terror I mean I know he's you know you're supposed in theory you're supposed to be you know more of a Backing big character. picture kind of character but you know I'm assuming the lost vikings can take control of of those you know I've never actually tried I've never actually played them I mean I'm, I'm making an assumption here so if someone if someone who's played the lost vikings before would like to confirm or deny um, that claim you know if, and they're they're you know a cross the board type of of character to play. I haven't yeah. played as them yet because they're not on rotation that often. But in a different way from Abathur, they are very much like a a bigger picture yeah. type of type of character to play. Um, um one thing I did find as playing Abathur, I found it as, as you were saying, latching on to other players, I just got so frustrated when it was like you're the warrior. Go at the front. No, don't, go, go, go there. Go, no, go. Ah. Yeah. Um, I also feel that there are so many people out there that, oh, I've got Abathur on me. I'm going to tower dive. <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do? Yeah. Um, what else? There? His talents work quite nicely. I do like them a lot. Uh, I totally think he's worth 10k. Um, I think I'd rather buy Thrall before I buy Abatha. Um, I keep saying that so often. Uh, he says sat on his 50 odd k. Um, is there any downsides? Oh, uh, yeah, Abatha certainly gives you a perspective that's quite unique. I don't think I've got much more else to add. Uh, I feel, there's something else I needed to talk to him about, about him. I couldn't, I can't remember what it is. Uh, it was his certainly pretty, nice. Pretty to, face. No, it was, it was certainly nice to. Oh well, yeah, his pajama is hilarious. Um, it was certainly nice to finally be able to play him. You know, having finally come on rotation. Um, that, yeah, that is something I would actually like a legit answer to: is why is Abathur not on rotation so often? And it, it's not just Abathur, it's um, Murky's like that, I think, and Lost Vikings are like that. There are certain characters that are just not I, on rotation that often. I think the Lost Vikings have been on a, a good few times since uh, we started playing. But no, certainly Abathur hasn't, and uh, Murky hasn't. Um, but yeah. Right, do I have any... I'm 
sure there's something else I'm forgetting about, Abatha. <sighs> nope, cannot think. I made I made a lovely Abatha cross stitch once. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. Right, okay, well, I think that's it for all of this week. Uh, shall we go on to my guess who? Yes. Right, okay. Let's do it. it. Okay, you ready? Yeah. I was the first of my class. I was the first of my class. I think this is in reference to the first hero added to Hots. I'm gonna need another one. Okay. But I'm gonna make a stab at it. You're gonna make you okay, go on. And I'm gonna say hold on, let me get let me get all the characters up. Do you even know who the first character to Hots was? No! To be honest, I think they would have to. Uh, Hearts would have to start with at least ten uh, characters anyway. Yeah. But they don't necessarily have the same all the classes available. Do, do, do. Also intrigued to see First where you're thing. looking this up, but okay. Uh. uh... I was the first of my class. I am going to guess yes. Sergeant Hammer. Nope. Okay. Next one. I taught hundreds to follow in my footsteps. Taught hundreds to follow in my footsteps. Hundreds to follow in my footsteps. Uther? Yes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The, the next two is uh, my most promising student turned to be my betrayer. And even after my death, I found, uh, so I wound up here in the Nexus still teaching the newbies. I guessed. With that good one, I guessed Uther because he is that he is your, your tutorial teacher, as it were. Like he yeah. brings you through the tutorial process. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, in the Warcraft universe, Uther was the first paladin, and uh. he ended up teaching other uh, paladins. And yeah. So yeah, that that that's it. It was Uther. I win. Yeah. I was surprised, uh, actually, you kind of didn't go for Arthas, but yeah. Eh. <laughs> oh, right, okay, well, that's it for this week. Uh, and I guess we shall see you next well, week. Well, if, if you have any thoughts about topics you would like us to talk about, or um, any responses to um, our opinions today, uh, you can respond down in the comments down below, or feel free to tweet us. Um, our Twitter information is down in the thingy. And, uh, yeah. I actually tell you what, uh, from next week on was we're actually going to do what the community has replied to uh, in the, the videos, because there is always um, Christina Metrodiv, I, I can't pronounce her name. Uh, he replies to Hero's Time, but we never actually talk about them. So next time, we'll start doing that. Yeah, shout out to Christina! Diana? Christiana? Christiana. I think it's Christiana, yeah. Anyway, right, so, yeah, next week. <laughs>